We've looked at several different types of geoms. Let's look at a few more which are quite useful and interesting as well. So here for this example we'll consider this particular data set. So this is a data frame that has two columns x and y and you can see here the x values are 3 to x y values are 3 2 1 4 5 6 and each row has a corresponding label. You'll shortly see why we are using this. Okay so this is the data frame. So we created this particular data frame using this code. We said df is data.frame. That's the function you use if you want to create a data frame from scratch as opposed to reading it from a CSV file, which is what we have done mostly. But you can create data frames in code and this is how you do it. So the first column is x. So we say x equals C315. No wonder you've got 315 showing up here. And then we've got y is C246 and you've got 246 showing up here and the label is the three strings A, B and C and that's what you see here. Okay, so when you create a data frame using the data.frame function, you will specify the column names optionally really and the values in each of the columns. Now, this is a little cumbersome because it's a little non-intuitive. Normally, we like to look at data frames as rows and there's another way to create a data frame using a different syntax. We will look at that later on in the course. For now, we'll just stick with this. So that's the data frame we have and again, I'm showing it here for convenience and we show you some code here. So what we are doing is we're saying P, we're just creating a ggplot with this data frame as the data and the aesthetics x, y map to x and y conveniently. Uh, it just so happens that the names of the columns x and y just match the names of the aesthetics x and y. Okay, that's just a coincidence. I could have called it A and B also. And uh, the label aesthetic is mapped to the label column. It's just a pure coincidence that the column names x, y and label actually correspond to the names of the aesthetics as well that we use. Okay, uh, so maybe I should have used something different. Okay, so now what we are doing is we are saying labs x equals null, y equals null. Basically what we are saying is for the purpose of this plot, I don't want any labels on the x or the y axis. So this is a an easy way to uh, suppress the labels on any of the axis. Okay, there are, there's another way to do it and we show it differently in other places, but this is just, that's what this line is doing. So therefore on the x axis, you will only see the the tick marks and the numbers associate numbers or whatever is associated with the tick marks x and y axis but you will not actually see the name of the variable that is plotted on each of those axes that's what it does okay uh, so this suppresses the x and y axis labels and then we are using a new function called theme and the theme function is used to control lots of different things on a plot things like plot title and so on so in this case, we want the plot's title to have a text size of 12. Okay, so that's what you're saying here by saying theme plot dot title equals element underscore text size equals 12. So we want a 12 point font for the plot's title. Okay, so all of this information is stored in the variable called p. Notice that so far in this plot, we have really not indicated any geom at all. Okay, so if you were to try and display this plot, you will see nothing, right? Because there is no geom for the system to actually show us anything. But we are not trying to show this at all because we are assigning it to a variable, which means the system will not even try to display the plot to us. Okay, so the code that's going to come on the following slides, we will do various things with P and we'll get different plots that are displayed. Okay, so what we are going to do is to display these four plots, right? The first plot, the geom we are using, of course, is geom point, which we are already familiar with. But here we are going to be using a geom called geom text, which we are not familiar with. We are also showing geom bar, which we are familiar with, and geom tile, which we are not familiar with. Okay, now we will not be using tile extensively now, but later in the course we might uh, encounter that. Okay. So we are saying AES XY label equals label. I'm just reminding you of what the aesthetics are mapped to in the original P variable where we have stored the basic characteristics of the plot. And here we are loading this library grid extra. This is a package that you already installed for doing something else earlier in the course. 
So you've already installed this package and we are just loading this and all that this we are using it for in this course is to plot ggplots side by side or one on top of the other and so on. Okay, uh, Without using facets, we are just creating two plots and we just want to slam them together. In this case, not two, but four plots, these four. Okay, So the first plot, we are using the function grid.arrange. So notice here that each of these lines is a separate ggplot. All we are doing by doing grid.arrange is to take all these four plots and put them together. n row equals 1. So all of them are coming together. Okay, so let's look at the individual plots. The first plot says p plus geom point, which is, we know what geom point is. It's a scatter plot. And gg title point. gg title is the function you use to give a title to a plot. Okay, and of course, when we say gg title point, point is going to appear here. And the font size of this we had already set with the uh, theme uh, option in the previous page. Okay, so the first line of code resulted in this plot. Okay, so the title just are just indicating what kind of a plot it is, that's all. Okay, so this is, uh, no wonder this point occurs here because the first one says x is 3, uh, rather this is 1, 4. Okay, this point is actually the second point. x is at 1, y is at 4, the point occurs here. This point is the, uh, uh, is uh, 3, Two, that's the first point here and this of course is the third point okay so we understand very well why the points are where they are you should take a close look at the data and make sure that every you you can read the coordinates of each of the points and see that it corresponds to one of these points okay so in the second plot this is geom text okay so here we are doing geom text gg title text so therefore the title is text and what geom text does is it takes the x and y coordinates to position the point and instead of putting a point out there it puts whatever is the label we have mapped to in this case we've said label equals label and therefore the labels are a b c and sure enough you see the label a here because we know this is the first point label b there that's the second point and label c there okay so you can use geom text and then you can use the label aesthetic to position some text on the graph instead of a point okay bar we understand this very well already the only point to note here is just to reinforce we normally geom bar does some computation right when you say geom bar and you indicate some factor variable on the x-axis then by default geom bar is going to count how many times each value of the factor occurs so for example in the diamonds data frame we said geom bar x equals cut, AES x equals cut, and therefore it counted how many occurrences in the data set were there of each kind of cut. Okay, that is the default behavior of geom bar. It counts how many times each value occurs. But in this particular case, we know the x, we know the y. Okay, so we don't have to have geom bar do any count for us. Therefore, we say stat equals identity, which means don't do any counting just plot it as it is and therefore you see the point here right this is uh, the first point 1 4 okay that's the second point 3 2 first point and 5 6 is the third point this is uh, 5 and the height is 6 okay so it's using uh, it's putting these on the x-axis and it's putting the height of the bar is determined by the y-axis Okay, geom tile, what it does is it puts a tile which is centered at these appropriate points, right? So if you look at the center of each of these tiles, you will find that uh, this corresponds to the, the center of this corresponds to the first point, uh, this second point and that the third point. Okay, so we can use these as well. Um, of course, in this course, we probably, bar we've already used extensively, point we have used extensively, text, we will start using it for annotating plots. We'll use it extensively, in fact, in the following videos. And bar, of course, we've used it quite a lot. Okay, so let's look at some more plots. Okay, so geom line is to create a line plot. Uh, in this uh, week's lectures, we are going to be using geom line quite a bit. And area is just a plot. It's somewhat like a line, but it fills in the bottom. But there's a slight difference. We'll look at it later. 
and geom path okay what it does is it takes the uh, order of the points right so this is 3 2 so it starts from there first point second point is 1 4 third point is 5 6 so the line just starts it goes in the sequence in which the data appears starting at the first point the, it draws a line from the first to the second from the second to the third and so on okay so if there are n points they will be n minus 1 lines okay there are three points so there are only two lines first to second second to third okay so geom polygon is very similar to geom uh, uh, geom path except that it fills in the area okay that's what geom polygon is used for now admittedly we'll be using geom line extensively geom path quite rarely but we do have one example of that coming up uh, in this week's lectures geom area sometimes and geom polygon probably never in this course okay so the code is going to look as you can predict geom line geom area geom path and the title is appropriate to match all of these okay so once again we have used grid dot arrange and said n row equals one that is what allows us to put all of the four plots together 